Hi, my name is Jonah Burgess and today I'm presenting Redirect, Extracting Malicious Redirections from Exploit Kit Traffic. A little bit about me, I'm a final year PhD student at Queen's University Belfast and I've been investigating browser and web-based threats. I like to compete in capture flag competitions in my spare time and if you have any questions about this presentation or the paper you can contact me at underscore CryptoCat on Twitter. So what is an exploit kit? An exploit kit is a malicious software package that can be used to automate the exploitation of computer systems. And a typical exploit kit attack might look something like this. So a victim visits a compromised web page using a vulnerable browser or a browser with some vulnerable plugins. The web page goes through a series of HTTP redirections obscuring the attack chain and the path to the exploit kit. A fingerprinting process occurs to identify any vulnerabilities in the browser or plugins. If a vulnerability is found for which the exploit kit has a corresponding exploit, it will run the exploit and deliver its malicious payload, which may be a traditional form of malware like ransomware or a crypto miner. If a vulnerability isn't found, the exploit kit will typically redirect to a benign web page or provide a 404 not found error in order to obscure the malicious behavior. There were several goals to this experiment. The first was to build a ground truth data set of exploit kit samples through manual analysis that could be reused in future experiments. We also wanted to develop a new system to generate a benign data set that we could later couple with a honeypot in future experiments. And the key component of the experiment was to build a system to map HTTP redirections from network traffic and extract features. Using, using this system, we wanted to identify any inherent differences between benign and malicious redirections and provide insights into the history of exploit kits and how stru the structures and methods of redirections and evasion techniques have evolved. And finally, we wanted to use the system to extract, combine and store features that we could use for future machine learning based research. So how do we map the HTTP redirections from the network traffic? For that, we use the Zeek intrusion detection system formerly known as Bro, and Zeek can process live network traffic or packet captures. And if you give Zeek a PCAP, it will generate a series of logs, one of which is the HTTP log. The HTTP log contains a list of all the HTTP entries, so all the request response pairs from the packet capture or from the network traffic. And we can use a small custom script to ensure that all server-side HTTP headers are also added to this log. This allows us to map all HTTP header based redirections so any redirections that occur through the referrer header or the location header can be easily mapped using the HTTP log. In order to map the content based redirects, so redirects that occur through HTML or JavaScript code or from an iframe, we need to analyze the content of the web pages. To do that we created a Zeek script which will reassemble the HTTP bodies and parse the content looking for HTML, JavaScript, and iframe based redirections and also uh, some basic ob obfuscated redirects like base64 and concatenation based. Um, this script will store each unique redirect as a log entry consisting of a timestamp, unique identifier, the source and destination URL and the type of redirect that occurred and the, reg the, the regex is designed to defeat simple obfuscation techniques so white space randomization, case sensitivity, foreign characters and things like that. Using these two logs, we can map all HTTP header and content-based redirections. The next thing that we do is we split these log entries into sets based on the source IP address so that we can track multiple hosts. And then we split them into time-based sessions. So if the time between two connections is greater than 15 minutes on the same IP address, we split it into two sessions. Uh, then finally, the Python AnyTree mod module is used to build redirection trees from these HTTP log entries. After all the redirections have been mapped and we're left with a series of redirection trees, we look at any single node tree, so any trees that have a single URL and no redirection. We compare each of these single node trees to the leaf nodes of the other trees and this is looking for a final redirection type of subdomain. A subdomain redirect is added if the Single, if the URL of a single node tree has the same domain as the URL in a leaf node of another tree but a different subdomain and they were accessed within 60 seconds of each other. At this stage we're left with a set 
of redirection trees and we need to extract redirection chains. A chain is defined as a unique path from the root node to one of its leaf nodes, excluding the root node's children which aren't on the direct path to the leaf node. And that's because they're unlikely to be attacker controlled. So we have an example here on the right of a redirection tree and the four chains which are extracted from it. So note that we first extract the chain from alpha.com to golf.com without modeling the siblings of beta.com. So we don't model the children of alpha.com that aren't on the path to golf.com in that chain. However, we do include charlie.com in this chain, despite charlie.com not being on the direct path to golf.com. And the reason for this is, in an attack, beta.com would be an attacker controlled domain, so they would they would own all of the domains or have control over the domains from here. Whereas alpha.com would simply be a website which has been compromised, so a redirect has been injected or a script has been injected to it. And most of the redirects that occur from that website are likely to be benign, so they're likely to be redirects that existed before the site was compromised. The structure of each redirection chain is stored in a JSON file. And 48 features are extracted from each node in each chain. So for each URL in each redirection chain, we extract 48 features. And we store these as rows in a CSV file, uniquely indexed by the sample name, the chain number, and the redirect number. And the 48 features either fall into the category of HTTP, redirection, URL, or content-based features. Uh, on the right-hand side of the screen here, we can see uh, a flow diagram just showing the broadly how the redirect program works. I'm just going to give a quick demonstration of redirect running in demo mode with a parameter of 5. So that will take 5 packet captures and try and extract the redirections from them. And you can see here how this works. So it, for each pcap the redirection chains are extracted. Uh, for example this pcap has two redirection chains, this single node chain and this redirection chain. Um, the redirection chains that are extracted are then compared against the redirection chain that we have saved as a test case. So this is the confirmed correct malicious test case. If this didn't match then this would show that the malicious chain was, was extracted incorrectly and it would give the correct uh, extraction. Uh, all of these extracted correctly by the looks of it and at the end we get some statistics about the type of redirections that occurred, um, the, the number of redirections per chain on average, the timing and things like that. Uh, once it's finished running it will also produce our features .csv which has um, the sample name, this is a classification so it's malicious, it has a sample name and then it has the redirection number uh, uniquely identifying uh, along them with these other features that will be used for machine learning. The malicious data set is comprised of packet captures collected from malwaretrafficanalysis.com and broadanalysis.com. These two sites host malicious pcaps alongside technical reports detailing the malicious behavior, the indicators of compromise, and quite often the URLs in the redirection chains. So we manually analyzed all of the samples alongside these reports and produced test cases which allowed us to see if any bugs were introduced in the project um, during the development. Some samples were discarded due to being spam based attacks, only containing post infection traffic, having too much stripped data, being corrupted, or the archives being locked and the author not being able to provide a password. Um, some pickups were missing a compromised host. Uh, so we did include these in the data set but they were clearly labeled so they can be excluded from machine learning in the future if required. And we were left with a total of 1,279 usable samples from 2013 to 2020, spanning 28 exploit kit families and 8 campaigns. On the right you can see an example of a test case for a sample which shows the redirection chain structure. To generate the benign data set we took the Alexa top 10,000 domains and did some pre-filtering to remove duplicate URLs, HTTPS sites and unreachable domains. So 8,475 domains were excluded for this reason. Uh, that might seem like a high number, but note that over 70% of the Alexa Top 10K uses HTTPS compared to 0.18% of our malicious data set. So typically the exploit kit pickups do not use HTTPS. 
Um, in order to process HTTPS, Zeek will need some adjustments or uh, will need a man in the middle or HTTPS stripping process in, in place to do this. Uh, out of the domains that were left, uh, they were fed into a system comprised of a Windows 10 virtual machine, Selenium running Internet Explorer 11, and T-Shark to capture network traffic. First, we screened each of the 1,525 remaining domains with the virus total API. Any d domains which were flagged by an antivirus were excluded from the data set, so this applied to 88 of the domains. We then tried to load each domain and any domains which fail to load within 60 seconds are also excluded from the data set. This applied to 37 of the domains. And for those sites which were not flagged by the virus total API and did not fail to load within 60 seconds, we wait for the page to load, attempt to close any pop-ups, so GDPR um, or cookie related pop-up windows, things like that, and then capture traffic for an additional 15 seconds. The Selenium driver, the browser, and T-Shark are then all fully reset in between the packet captures. In terms of the malicious results, over 96% of malicious domains were correctly extracted. Over 91% of malicious chains were correctly identified. Over 7% were semi-correctly identified, and less than 1% were incorrectly identified. Uh, so note that the semi-correct chains are chains beginning and ending with the correct domain but some of the redirects are missing or ordered incorrectly in the middle. Whereas an incorrect chain is a chain where we, we completely fail to extract a chain between the compromised host and the exploit kit. Um, the malicious yearly results have broken down on the right. Uh, note that the results may be affected by the lack of samples. So 2013, 2018 and 2019 have around 50 samples combined, which isn't really a large enough portion to give an accurate representation. Also, 2015 appears to be an outlier with a high number of semi-correct chains. This was largely due to the fact that 38 of the 162 samples from this year were from the BizCN campaign, which used a combination of Unicode and concatenation-based obfuscation to evade detection. So uh, this uh, that explains the outlier there, although it's notable that around the same number of malicious URLs were success successfully extracted for that year. For the benign results, 12,783 benign domains were extracted from 5,910 chains. Around 90% of the PCAPs were processed successfully, and the remaining were either empty or produced parsing errors in Zeek. And around 40% of the successful PCAPs contained no redirections. On the right here, we can see a breakdown of the redirection stats for malicious versus benign, and you can see here that a a much larger proportion of benign redirections are referrer based and a, a far larger proportion of malicious redirections are JavaScript and iframe based. When evaluating the system a couple of questions may come to mind. So couldn't attackers just use more advanced obfuscation to ensure that the redirection chain isn't extracted by our system? And the answer to that is yes, if attackers use advanced and custom obfuscation methods that can't be easily generalized then redirections may be missed, but this is not a weakness that's unique to our system. Obfuscation is an ongoing research problem and this works complementary to the to the ongoing deobfuscation and dynamic analysis based research. Also the fact that we only fail to extract 0.7% of malicious chains is promising as the semi-correct chains may still contain enough data for the machine learning. Another question could be, uh, could attackers insert benign redirects into the attack chain to bypass detection or poison machine learning models. And yes, they could insert benign redirects, but they can't insert benign redirects directly between two EK related domains. So they don't control the, the benign domain and they wouldn't be able to force that further redirection to take place. They could redirect the victim to benign domains after the attack's complete to try and add some noise and keep while keeping the original chain intact. But forwarding victims from an exploit kit domain to a benign domain would increase the chance of detection as the benign website admin may investigate the large number of traffic that they're receiving or get alerts from confused victims. Uh, what if the use of HTTPS is, becomes more common in exploit kits? So our system currently can't process HTTPS PCAPs. Uh, this has 
based on Zeke's design. So we would need to in implement some kind of man in the middle or HTTPS stripping or add the functionality to Zeke so that you can provide a decryption key in order to decrypt the PCAPs. Um, this being said, HTTPS was only seen in 0.18% of the malicious data set and it adds uh, some additional work and complexity for exploit kit operators. So whether this will be seen as an emerging trend, I'm not too sure. Uh, if the exploit kit introduces a delay between redirections, could it be missed? So uh, as mentioned at the start, redirect will split time-based sessions if there is a 15, minute, 15 minutes between two log entries. So if there was a large enough delay here, that might avoid detection. However, this relies on the user waiting on the web page for over 15 minutes for the exploit kit to even kick into action and that will reduce the number of potential victims dramatically. Similarly, whenever we were collecting the benign uh, data set, whenever we are generating the benign data set with Selenium, we wait for 15 seconds after the page is loaded. So an attacker could introduce a 15 plus second delay here. However, this would result in less users being exploited as they if they leave the site within 15 seconds and we could easily increase this delay on our system um, to capture the traffic for longer. There are a few areas of future work for this experiment. So the primary goal was to extract features from machine learning and that's the most immediate area of future work to be explored. Uh, we could also add additional features so by default Zeek produces a DNS log and a files log so we could look at the age and scheduled validity of domain names, the type of files that are dropped and things like that. We could also expand the data set, so the bigger the better. Um, it's relatively easy for benign data, but the malicious data set requires us to manually analyze the samples and compile test cases. Also, the sources of exploit kits are scarce, and obtaining your own samples isn't easy due to the anti-evasion and anti-analysis techniques that they often employ. Uh, we also want to add some HTTPS stripping, either by applying redirect to live traffic or by adding the functional functionality to Zeek so that we can provide a decryption key along with a PCAP. Uh, and then finally, we'd like to apply the system to some other forms of web-based malware, so fake updaters, form jacking, things like that. Thanks for listening to this presentation. If you have any questions about the work, you can contact me on Twitter at underscore CryptoCat or I'll take some questions now. Thank you.